I do not trust passport bros at all. But wait, Kevin, aren't you a passport bro? You live in Southeast Asia. You have a Southeast Asian girlfriend. You must be a passport bro. Uh, no, I'm not a passport bro. I absolutely refuse that term. I hate that term. I hate passport bros in general. I hate anybody who gives themselves that label. And I'm going to explain why in a second, because I have two stories for you in particular that's going to really give you a reason why I get in my feels, dare I say, when I uh, hear the term passport bro. Okay. There's some of the, the cringiest, most annoying, most contemptible types of people that there are. Now, Am I saying that if you travel and you want to have romantic relationships with the, the locals that you travel to, that that makes you a contemptible person? Of course not, right? I'm talking about something very different here, right? So first, let's break down what a passport bro even is. Well, first of all, I started doing what I do living in Southeast Asia in 2019 before the term even existed. Um, and then now you see these guys on you know, YouTube or Instagram, or whatever, like flexing this passport as if it's like a portal to another dimension. It's like, dude, I've been using this passport since I was like freaking five years old, right? So it's nothing special. I mean, it's great that you can use your Western American privilege to uh, travel to any country and, you know, live pretty cheaply or vacation cheaply there. That's an amazing thing. And like I said before, I don't even have a problem with you dating locals. That's fine. Or even going exclusively to, to date locals. The problem that I have with passport bros is it's, well, let me tell you these stories first so that you understand where I'm talking, where I'm coming from. Okay. So I have two different stories. The first one is a bit more recent. I was at this co-working space. It was like a co-working slash co-living space in Thailand. And um, there was this one dude there. I remember I was just working on my, I was like working on a video or something. And there's this guy next to me and there's a guy across from me. The guy across from me was like some, I don't know. He was like, if you plucked up a stereotypical Guido from like the nineties or something. And he leaned over to the guy next to me. I don't even know if he knew this guy. And he was like, Hey man, do you, do you know where like the girls are here? You know, where like, you know where I can like find girls? Keep in mind, this is a co-working space, right? So we're here working. So this guy's on his laptop, like coding or something. <laughs> and this guy's like, hey, do you, do you do you know where I can get girls here? And the guy was like, uh, no, sorry, man. And I thought that was really weird, but I was focused on my work. So I just went back to working. Uh, a few days pass. And then I find out that there was like all this drama and commotion in the co-working space um, <laughs> where apparently some guy was going around harassing all of the girls uh, there. <laughs> And then he was like the first person ever to get kicked out of this co-working space. This co-working space, they, they had a heavy emphasis on uh, community and doing like these events and stuff. Everybody was super friendly. The staff was friendly. Everybody's cool. And it, it wasn't even like weird to like hit on girls there, right? It was very normal for people to meet, especially if you're going to a new country where you don't know anybody, to like date within that sort of circle. That's not uncommon. But despite that, this guy was such a weirdo. <laughs> And he was a pretty good looking guy too. Like he wasn't like this like ugly gremlin looking dude. He was probably like my height. So like I'm 6'2". Um, you know, he's like a good looking like Italian dude. And yet he still ended up bothering so many of the girls there that he had to be the first person ever after this place is open for a few years to get kicked out. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyway, that's that's kind of what I look at as a passport bro as somebody who's there just for the posse just for the meow meow and literally nothing else to the point where they're willing to go harass everybody. Um, there were uh, local Thai people at that co-working space, but there were also like, um, you know, other Europeans, other Westerners there too. Okay. So anyway, that's just left a bad taste. So it's very clear that this guy was just there to just try to get the meow meow. I don't know why he was in a co-working space. Maybe he was like a pickup artist coach and he was terrible. I don't know. Speaking of second story, I used to work for, or kind of was like a business collaboration with a dating coach. And for me, you know, I was very skeptical. I was like, what? you're a dating coach and why are you in Southeast Asia? You know, it's like, oh, it's just conveniently a little bit easier here uh, for most guys. <laughs> why are you here, right? Unless you're uh, coaching guys on how to be more successful in Southeast Asia. Why are you here? <laughs> um, and so 
I was skeptical, but then him and I went out uh, one night. This is uh, my 26th birthday. And, you know, I got lucky and it looked like he got lucky too. So I was like, okay, maybe this guy actually is legit. Maybe it's not just a Coke or whatever, you know? And then the next one or two nights him and I went out together, we both pulled to put it in PUA terms. Um, I mean, his girl was never as good looking as my girl. I'm just just objectively speaking, I'm not trying to like brag, or whatever. It's just true. Uh, but anyway, I mean, he had some disadvantages. He was he's a lot shorter. He's bald, uh, not in as good of shape. So that you know, I was just like, okay, maybe this is true. Because another thing that he said too is, oh, I used to have a lot of success in the U.S. It's just that I like Asian girls. That's why I'm out here. So I I, I was like, hey, okay. I mean, hey, you you seem to have been doing fine uh, here and. For me, that was the case. I didn't come out. I didn't even know what a passport bro was. Again, I don't think the term existed. I came out to Thailand originally just because I wanted a low cost of living place to build my business up because it's hard to do that in the U.S. when you work online. Um, I actually was dating a few different girls that previous year in the U.S. So clearly, like for me, I'm not moving there because, oh, I suck with girls back in the U.S. Therefore, I need to get a passport and go. Right. I didn't do that. And by the way, that point to that point, I'm going to get back in the story in a second, but it's important for me to mention this. Um, if you suck with girls in the U.S. or anywhere in the West, you're still going to suck with them when you come out here, too. You just are. What, when you, what you see on social media and what makes things um, seem easier is that a lot of guys pay for it. <laughs> They they pay for it either by basically being like their their sugar daddy, proxy sugar daddy, where they pay for everything uh, or, you know, um, ladies of the night, prostitution, whatever you call it. Um, it's very cheap over here. I haven't partaken myself personally, but from what I hear, it can be anywhere. It's usually like under fifty dollars, like easily, you know, and you can spend like the whole night with them. So um, a lot of people do that. And I'm pretty sure some of them will actually hang out with you. So it seems like these like older dudes or these um, these sort of not so good looking guys uh, are hanging around with these hot girls is because they're paying for it. Right. A lot of times they're paying for it in the second way that I mentioned. Uh, so, yeah, really, really cool stuff, guys. That, that makes you such a winner. <laughs> um, and look, I don't have a problem with partaking in that, but. A lot of these passport bros will act as if they're like, you know, tough shit, um, <laughs> even though they're, they're literally just paying for it. They do. If you're paying for it, that's what you want to do. You know, fine, whatever. But don't brag about it. Right. Don't don't be like, oh, look, I'm a passport bro. I'm free. I get to hire cheap prostitutes. Yay. <laughs> and pat yourself on the back for it. Like, come on. Anyway, uh, so back to the story. Um, Where was I at? Yeah. So. Him and I, we, like I said, we ran a business together. We went back to Las Vegas to film like a small documentary of a client's transformation. And uh, I, I expected because you know, I was doing well in, in Asia. I was doing well in the U.S. before. And I expected when we went back that it would be the same. And it was for me. It was the same. While, while I was in that house in Vegas, I dated like, you know, maybe five or six girls within the span of like two months. Um and I wasn't actively trying to be like an F boy. It's just that, you know, Vegas is Vegas, right? So stuff happens. And during that time, the dating coach guy, he had zero girls, zero. He just kept striking out over and over and over again. I started to get concerned. I was like, dude, am I like working for a fraud or something? Because um, he's supposed to be the expert, right? Because I wasn't a dating coach. I was the fitness guy. I was an assistant dating coach. Um, obviously, I knew a lot about dating and I advise guys on that now. I'm happy to. But I never put that label on myself. This guy was like, I'm the dating coach. I'm a pickup artist. This is who I am. I'm the ladies man. And I, every time we go to the club, you just strike out, strike out, strike out. And you make all these excuses and stuff, right? Oh, the girls here aren't that hot. Uh, <laughs> oh, not, nobody in there was my type. Oh, all these girls like But And sometimes that's true. But after that happens like every day for like months, you start to be like, hmm, maybe it's that guy that's the problem and not all of these weird girls in Vegas or whatever, you know? And um, it became very clear. I know hindsight's 2020. It became very clear to me that this guy was a passport bro, <laughs> that he was very much embellishing his success 
of what he claimed when he was back in the US. And he really only just came out to Asia for that, right? And then, you know, the business partnership broke up. He basically kicked me out of the house. It was really stupid, but whatever. It's a long, long story. I talked about it on my, my primary channel. Um, some of you guys that watch this channel probably already know what I'm talking about. And um, as far as I know, I think he moved back somewhere to Asia and uh, is continuing to do the passport pro thing, <laughs> even though he doesn't want to admit it because it's, it doesn't sound very cool, right? You don't want to hire a passport bro as a dating coach, right? Um, and yeah, I, I just don't, I, I want to make sure, especially as I'm posting more content on Southeast Asia, that I'm very clear about my disdain for passport bro, passport bros, I should say, some people who put their label on that, that label on themselves. And I'm not associated with that community at all. I do not like them at all. I think they're weak, contemptible people. I just hate it. It's very rare that I try to say, like, I really don't like this group of people, uh, but I don't. I just don't. Because what's implied, too, again, on the surface, I do everything that the passport bros do, right? But what's implied with passport bros and what they do is that they put the women on a pedestal. They put the the, the meow meow on a pedestal. And as soon as you do that, you and women are very good. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Women are very good at detecting simps. They're very good at detecting weak men. And they will just take advantage of you from the get-go. I've never had any Asian girl, or well, I say Asian girl because, you know, I'm in Southeast Asia, um, ever try to take advantage of, of me and my money, try to make me pay for stuff that, uh, for services or whatever. I've, I've never had that. Because they understand that I'm not one of those passport bros, okay? <laughs> they, like they can they can tell just by your aura how you carry yourself, right? Uh, let's let's be honest. Passport bros probably aren't the most charismatic of people, so they they paint a target on their backs, you know. And um, again, I have no problem with you coming out here to try to improve your dating life. That's great. I don't consider you a passport, bro. If you come out to one of these countries to like find a girlfriend or find a meaningful relationship, I really don't. I only consider you a passport, bro. If you just like, you're so starving for that meow meow. You're so starving for posse that like, you're just going to spend thousands of dollars with your passport, just fly somewhere for a few weeks to try to get laid. And then you fail and be, uh, yeah. And then you basically fail or you get swindled. And then, so you, uh, resort to going to a brothel and then you go back home patting yourself on the back thinking you're a pin <laughs> those are the people that i i have i don't i don't like i just don't like and then they go brag to their friends about how they got laid so often and, and you know, wherever i i hate that shit man i hate it i hate it <laughs> um again one more thing if you do that and you don't start patting yourself on the back and think that you're the freaking man i guess that's fine right but the whole idea, like passport bros, the whole idea of them is them like flexing that lifestyle. Um, it's just annoying and it's cringe. And it's really antithetical to self-improvement because really what you're doing, and that's the goal of this channel, right? Self-improvement, going beyond self-improvement, looking at the philosophy to your values to try to create a great life for yourself and, and for others that you care about. And it's antithetical to self-improvement because what you're doing is you're, you're running away from your problems from home and trying to find it somewhere else right? Rather than fixing the problems at home. Now, if the problems at home are really bad, and you know that you have the ability to, to handle it, but you don't want to deal with that BS, and you want to have a better opportunity, a better life, that's, that's good. That is what that isn't running away from your problems. That is uh, seeing that there's problems that aren't worth going through problems that you've already dealt with, and you've already conquered in some way, but you don't want to do that anymore. And then you, so you go over here instead, right? That's what I've done. That's what the friends that I surround myself have done. Most of my friends out here have Vietnamese uh, wives or girlfriends. However, they were successful in their dating lives already in the U.S. or the West. Um, one guy in particular I'm thinking of, he came here with his girlfriend, his American girlfriend. They broke up and then he started dating locals after that, right? So it's not that he was like, oh, I can't get laid, <laughs> I assume him, his girl, him, his, his, him having a girlfriend, he was getting laid, right? Uh, it's like he wasn't like, oh, I can't get laid. I need, I'm just gonna move to Asia where it's apparently easier. <laughs> and 
a few of my other friends were the same as me, where they would like backpack through Asia and sometimes maybe Europe, South America, stay at hostels and hook up with, um, you know, other Western girls. The, that's that's a different thing as well. Like they weren't taking like that easy route, I should say, right? Of just dating locals and flexing your money and just paying for everything, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway, if you are a passport bro, I don't hate you. Even though I kind of said that at the beginning, I just hate the concept of passport broing and putting that label on yourself. And the, one of the reasons that I have um, a real personal gripe against it is because people will hear like myself or my friends who are like normal, cool people, I'd like to think, and hear that we're out here and they just think that we're one of these passport bros. Is this is going to be further from the truth? It's just so annoying. It's like if you are, let's say you're, um, let's say you're on the right or you're a Republican or whatever, and people just assume that you're like a racist, a homophobic bigot, you know, that like has guns everywhere and, and wants to give guns to like a three year old or something. Like it's just all these dumb, weird stereotypes that aren't true, um, that it's just unfair to be characterized as. But some leftists will just look at you that way because that's what they heard of typical Republicans like because they've never been down to the south or they've been to Texas or, or anything like that. They've only been up in like coastal cities. And it's the same thing with the pa passport bros and, and people who are abroad. Right. It's disrespectful to the culture as well. I mean, my girlfriend is from this culture. I have a lot of friends from not just Vietnam, but Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, all these other places. It, it's like demeaning to them too. It's freaking annoying and I hate it. <laughs> and I hate, I hate that people will start to diminish something that could be really good of you, you know, as Nomad Capitalist, the YouTube channel would say, go where you're treated best, right? I feel like I'm treated best here and I love my life here. I love the culture here. Maybe I have more of an, uh, a natural affinity to it being half Asian, I'm half Japanese. But I love it. And then it's the fact that I get sometimes unfairly labeled as a passport bro or get warped into that community just by the mere fact that I'm in the, uh, an expat in the same location. It sucks. It sucks. I hate it. <laughs> it's annoying. Okay. Um, I am not part of that community. I will never be part of that community. And if you take self-improvement seriously, you will never consider yourself part of that community either. Well, that's all I got to say for this video. I feel like I might get some hate, but I don't care. It is what it is. I have to speak my truth. You feel me? So, yeah. Well, that's all. Let me know what you think in the comment section. See you in the next video. Bye.